Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels, and this is my fourth pregnancy, but it's the first time that I did the amniocentesis. And this was not an easy decision for me to make. And I'll talk later in the video about why I decided to do this. A coworker of mine said she lost sleep over deciding if she should take the test or not. Eventually she ended up deciding not to take the test. So it's really not an easy decision. And if you're facing this decision, just know you are not alone and it's very, very complicated. And we'll get into the video reasons why you should and should not take this test. Also in the last few years, the technology used for this test has changed and we're able to test more things. So in this video, I wanted to explain what is an amniocentesis specifically in 2024, because things have changed in recent years and also about specifically amniocentesis in Israel, which is where I live, and a little bit about pros and cons, should you do it? And I'll discuss also my experience with the test, why I decided to do it, my thoughts as a Jewish Orthodox woman, and what is Jewish Orthodox perspective on this amnio test. So what is an amniocentesis? It's a procedure where a small amount of amniotic fluid is taken and in this amniotic fluid, there's skin cells from the baby, and we are able to test the baby's DNA code. The optimal weeks for this test are between weeks 17 and 20. There's three techniques to analyze the fetus's genetic information. The first one is the traditional form that's been used for many, many years, which is the karyotype, where we use a microscope to look at the chromosomes, the 46 chromosomes where the DNA information is displayed. And we look at the forms under a microscope to make sure that there's no additions or subtractions. And this is using only what we can see in the microscope. So for example, Down syndrome where there's an extra chromosome is easily detected in this technique. The next technique is called the CMA, the chromosomal microarray where we're able to look beyond what a microscope can see and we can look inside the chromosomes and see if large parts of the DNA are missing or added and we're able to be able to detect much more things. Now, this is the standard in Israel in the last four years. It's been used for about 12 years. And the genetic counselor explained to me, if we look at the genetic information like a book, this technique shows us if one of the chapters in the book is missing, meaning a large part of the DNA is missing. With the information that they have, they know that when this is missing or added, it means this genetic disorder. Able to identify almost 700 different syndromes. The more advanced technique is called the exome sequencing or the whole exome sequencing. Here we're looking inside a specific gene and actually looking at the genetic information inside the gene, like looking to find a missing word in chapter 15. They do this with comparing the baby's full DNA in comparison with his parents and seeing if there's any abnormalities in the baby's DNA. To the best of my knowledge, this technique is not the standard in the world. Currently, it's not the standard in Israel. I heard a lot of doctors say that this is probably the future but they still don't know how what a lot of these deletions and additions mean and so this technique is still not fully developed and it's very expensive so in israel to do this test today you would have to do it privately it would cost about two thousand dollars and the genetic counselor explained to me that it's not really gonna add a lot of benefit and might cause even more information that we don't know how to deal with. So what they do recommend in Israel today is saving a part of your amniotic fluid and preserving it till the end of your pregnancy in case some genetic or some problem arises during your pregnancy. Then you're able to take that amniotic fluid and do an exome sequencing for a specific gene that is required. Saving this costs about $150. In terms of the risk of this exam to the fetus and to the mom, so in the past they talked about one in 200 chance of a miscarriage. Today, in more recent studies, they're talking about in Israel, one in a thousand. I saw research talks about one in 800, one in 1400. Number can depend on exactly who's performing the exam. So if you go to someone who's 
known and is a real specialist. It could be even one in 2000. So while the risk of this exam has gone down to about one in a thousand, the findings they find because of the new technology of the CMA, they are finding many more findings than they used to find. A big research they did in Israel, one in 130 cases, a genetic disorder is found in the fetus without any other indication found, meaning all the ultrasounds, all the blood work is looks fine and looks normal and there's a serious genetic disorder. So today, while the risk is about one in a thousand and the findings is about one in 130, even when nothing else is indicated, the ultrasounds, the age of the mom is under 35, one in 130, doctors recommend yes to take this exam and my public insurance that I go to, Maccabi, recommends this to all women at any age to take this exam. Only about 30% of autis autism can be detected using the genes, meaning they'll be able to detect autism only in 30% of the cases. In Israel, we have about 180,000 births every year, and Israeli women have more screenings and more ultrasounds than most women in the Western world, and this includes amnio as well. So we have many women performing amnios even though there's no other indication where it's recommended in the states or in other western countries only when there's some indication or some issue that's found in the ultrasounds like i mentioned in israel my health insurance recommend this to every woman in every age of course the decision to take this exam is the woman's at the end it's an option you don't have to do it but it is recommended and many women do choose to do it. In terms of funding, the health ministry in Israel will fund this if any indication is found in the ultrasound or in any of the genetic testing, then it will be completely funded to take the amnio and also above age 33. Now this age was originally over 35, then over 34, now it's over age 33 which is exactly my age. The reason that age played a factor in the funding by the Ministry of Health is because there are a lot of chromosomal abnormalities that have to do with the woman's age. But the technology of the CMA is able to detect many more things and syndromes that age 20, a woman has the same chance of having that a fetus with that syndrome compared to a woman who's 40. But even if it's not completely funded by the Ministry of Health, even if you're below age 33 and have no other indication, you could still do it by your health insurance. It costs about $120. Just from my pool of about 100 people I know, generally in Israel, the seculars will, most of them will take the amnio ultra-orthodox who are also more strict about any abortion in case of any genetic issue, they will generally not take this test. And religious Zionists like myself, generally most will not, but it's more of a case-by-case -case basis. Um, for example, friends of mine who are doctors or their parents are doctors, they're more likely to yes do it as it's medically suggested to take this test and if you're over 35 you might be more likely to take this test so in terms of taking this test yes or no it's a little bit tricky because if no one took this test we know that there would be many more babies born with serious genetic problems but at the same time if everyone took this test then you know one in a thousand or so, God forbid, healthy babies would be terminated. So it's a very big dilemma and it's not a simple question. I think that if there were no risk to the fetus, obviously almost everyone would take this test because information is a good thing. And especially there are cases where they're able to, um, the knowledge helps them prepare um, get ready for the baby if he needs right after birth some special attention is required let's get into some pros and cons should you take this test first of all you don't have to take 
any test or do anything you don't want to even if it's medically recommended even if there's some indication you don't have to and a doctor told me this and it really reassured me he said there's only one thing you have to do and that's give birth you don't have to do anything you don't want to some say that it depends on what you would do with the results if you know that you would definitely not terminate the pregnancy even in severe genetic disorders then why take the risk there's no point but some people still would want to know the information and also like i said there are cases when they're able to prepare for the baby uh, something after birth or even in vitro treatment to help the baby so the information can still be beneficial so let's get into some pros first of all it can calm you down pregnancy can be a stressful time you're worried if your baby is healthy or not and this is the only test that really evaluates and gives you a conclusive answer about your baby's genetics all the other tests are screenings and knowing that everything is okay can really calm you down for the rest of your pregnancy and especially if there's some indication like my friend had an indication one in ten chances she was going to have a serious genetic disorder and taking the amnio and finding out that her baby does not have this actually really really calmed her down another pro odds versus gains like we said medically the recommendation at least in israel is that the risk and in terms of gain the gain outweighs the risks also the main pro is that it detects serious genetic disorders and not everyone is cut out to raise a special kid it's always very difficult but especially in cases where one of the parents suffers from some mental illness and they know that this special child will literally just tear them and their family apart it can really help detect things that otherwise are non-detectable now in terms of the cons the main con is of course the risk that you're putting at your fetus one in a thousand I can't even imagine what that must feel like to cause harm to your fetus. My friend, her cousin had two healthy twins and she did an amnio and she lost the pregnancy. So that's something that is so devastating and unimaginable. Also, it can put you in a complicated moral dilemma. First of all, what to do with the information, even if it is a conclusive genetic severe disorder but also there are cases where they say they know that in 40 percent of these cases there is some serious medical issue but in 60 case percent of the cases there they won't none of these will show any symptoms and then you're left with this information where you don't know what to do about it and it's very very difficult also in my opinion morally just the thought of like terminating you know babies that have a defect like obviously in judaism we do have cases where abortions are allowed i made an entire video about when um, in which cases we allow abortions so if you're interested in that jewish perspective go check out that video but just the thought of you know if we were to as a society to terminate all babies that are not perfect or that have some genetic disorder just is really horrifying and i don't think that that is the way that jewish values teach us so what is the jewish orthodox perspective on the amnio test and how i eventually ended up doing it there is an organization called pua which help jewish orthodox couples dealing with infertility or dealing with anything birth related and medical related and they say that because the risk is so low it's not that it's forbidden but they do not recommend it they recommend the nipped exam which is a blood work that doesn't pose any risk on the pregnancy now the nipped is still a screen test although a very accurate one and it only detects about 30% of what the amnio is able to detect, but they feel that for age purposes, things like Down syndrome, the NIPT is enough, and they don't think that you should put your fetus at risk. It could place you in complicated moral dilemma that you don't wanna enter. So 
in general, they don't recommend it. My personal feeling was not to do it. I didn't want to do it, but I did listen to my doctors, two OBGYNs that highly recommended it, not because there was some indication, but they just really believe that this is the right thing to do. So I decided to listen to them in this case, also because my age is 33 and it's fully funded. So that also gave me an indication to, okay, this time around, my risk is a little bit higher for genetic issues. So I decided to go through with it. Okay, so I ran out of battery. I just wanted to talk about my experience. So some people say it hurts. I had a few friends that say that it was unpleasant. For me, I really didn't feel it. It really was easier and lighter than a blood test. The doctor said, okay, we're gonna go in, and, but he didn't warn me. He didn't say three, two, one. So he started and I didn't even realize that he started. So thank God it went really well. And um, you're supposed to rest for 48, 72 hours, not lift anything heavy. Rest, you don't have to lie in bed all day, but rest, don't hold anything heavy. Uh, don't do any exercise. You might feel some pressure on your stomach. That's normal. So of course I was nervous that something would go wrong. And I was also scared of the results because she said that one in 130 or one in 150, they'll find some serious genetic disorder. And what also worried me, she said in two to 3% of cases, they find something non-conclusive, like I told you, like 40%, it could represent itself medically, but 60% not. That really worried me because I didn't want to be placed in these difficult moral dilemmas. So thankfully the results were good. So that was my experience. Thankfully it went well. And I really don't think that there's a right or wrong answer. There's what's right for you and your spouse and what your doctor is recommending you to do and just any decision that you make is going to be the right decision and it's not an easy decision to make so know that you're not alone and I hope this video helped someone learn about the amnio test or know that they're not alone in their decision uh, so hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up thanks see you next time